Um, next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Guido Ferrari, Ferrari from, uh, again, Duke Human Vaccine Institute at Duke Institute, um, who will help us um, uh, understand more about the FC gamma receptor functions, uh, assays that, are, um, that have been done and what, that are underway. Being Thank you, uh, Nicole. And uh, more than uh, uh, explaining FCA-mediated uh, antibody function today, I'm going to uh, propose why we need to study more in depth these kind of response. And I'm presenting on the behalf of this uh, group of colleagues uh, who have put together a proposal for NIH that uh, will be uh, reviewing the future. But uh, there's definitely no doubt that inducing broadly neutralizing antibody responses in the, is the holy grail for HIV vaccine and prevention from infection. But the reality is that we have a strong evidence that the polyfunctional FC-mediated antibody responses can play a role. As indicated by pre and clinical studies, and here in this cartoon, you have a, a representation of all these responses from phagocytosis to complement the deposition and the killing of the infected cells. Um, there's a, a, a very nice uh, a set of uh, a study that were performed after uh, HVTN 505 was uh, complete and uh, there was a, a lack uh, of uh, overall efficacy. What it was uh, uh, discovered by Georgia Tamaris and their group is that uh, uh, antibody, uh, phagocytosis and FC gamma receptor to a binding antibody responses to the HIV-1 envelope glycoprotein were both inversely correlated with HIV-1 acquisition. And these went well with the other findings uh, by Julie Meckler, I thought that polyfunctional CD8 T cell responses were inversely correlated. And lastly, the sieve analysis revealed that the HIV envelope sequences from breakthrough infection of vaccine recipients were more distant from the vaccine subtype to be inserted than those of viruses isolated from infected individuals in the placebo group. And again, all of this was observed in absence of uh, overall efficacy. But the, the important point was that uh, both the phagocytosis and the binding to the FC-gamma uh, receptor 2A were independent correlates of risk when assessed as a univariate uh, variable and controlled for polyfunctional T cell responses. So they contributed independently to uh, the uh, protection. In RB144, um, there was a 31% overall protection with um, correlates of risk that were identifying the primary analysis. We know the story of the anti-V1, V2 binding IG1 responses that inversely correlate with risk, whereas the anti-envelope plasma IgA responses that provide a direct correlation with risk of infection. And in the secondary analysis, both of the polyfunctional CD4 T cell responses and an ADCC in a vaccine with low anti-IGA uh, responses uh, correlate with protection. What happened is that we perform an additional study on the FC-mediated antibody uh, responses to identify that the higher IgG3 responses uh, were present in RV144 compared to the non-protective X04 study, and there were correlation with the phagocytosis. This was done by Georgia and uh, Gali. And, uh, and the ability of IgA uh, was uh, to inhibit some of the IgG1 mediated ADCC responses, as well as uh, uh, synergy between uh, responses against the V1, V2, and C1, C2 epitopes. Again, providing information on what these uh, FC-mediated uh, responses may do. Now, AGBTN702, to fast forward, did not recapitulate RV144. And you've already heard that there were a difference in immunogen uh, composition between the subtype B and the subtype C. There was a difference in adjuvant alum in a V144 versus MM59. Eric has already pointed out some of the differences. And there were more that we uh, identify even for a ADCC in some of the ancillary study, AGFTN 107 and 108. 
And lastly, there were different structure of the recombinant GP120, where full length instead of an 11 amino acid deletion uh, for the GP120 used uh, in RB144 was used in the 702. And these differences can alter epitope exposure and immunogenicity. So what uh, uh, it comes out is that each of the previous parameters can highly impact the DFC mediated uh, antibody function. And uh, you've heard uh, from George about the difference in V1, V2, the composition of the IgG subclasses. Uh, Eric can mention how the adjuvant activation of immune system and glycosylation alters some of the profile of antibody and immune responses as reported by. Uh, Monica Vaccaro and Beffa Franchini. And then uh, the epitopes presented uh, uh, by the recombinant proteins are definitely different. Um, where are we going with this? We came out with the idea that uh, at least a three uh, follow-up study should be performed. The analysis of the anti-V1, V2, and binding antibody responses, uh, the polyfunctionality of the CD4, these are responses and seed analysis. All argument that have already been touched by George and, and uh, these are the investigators who are going to perform uh, the analysis. But what we think is that, that these analyses may not be sufficient to explore the limitation of the antibody responses and lack of protection of seven, uh, in 702. And because of everything that we have observed in a 505 RV144 in preclinical study investigating polyfunctional FC mediated antibody responses is required. We put together these hypotheses that uh, uh, encompass the fact that the vaccine elicited polyfunctional FC mediated antibody responses against them. We're not just pointing to one functionality. We want to make sure that we explore how uh, these uh, uh, combination of uh, uh, responses work together. Um, in 702, these polyfunctional uh, responses provide insufficient coverage of the circulating endemic HIV-1 isolates because of their specificity or biophysical properties. The adjuvants used in this vaccine regimen induce a humoral innate cellular combination that were only partially effective in curbing virus replication. So in this case, how did the DNK cells um, interact with the autologous humoral responses? And in order to do this, we think that the machine learning approaches that evaluate the results from the already proposed studies, we don't want to discard them. We want to incorporate those findings in what we propose and the functionalities explore in our proposal will reveal new aspect of the immune responses and correlates of the risk. So just to give you a flavor is that if when we look in HVTN 100, the correlation between binding antibody responses and EDCC, you can see here that we never got the a, uh, R above 0 0.4. And when we look at the uh, correlation with CD4 T cell responses, there was no correlation. So all these analyses are going to explore different immunological spaces of our immune responses, which is important. Uh, in, in addition, we know that uh, by using only vaccine match response, we can identify very nice uh, ADCC responses against infected cells as represented by the first five bars and responses in HVTN 100. But when you go down to other isolates that were identified during acute infection, then the story is a completely different. You have a very low uh, response rate in a very different uh, level of responses. In phagocytosis, you have a better response uh, across uh, uh, all the participants. But when you look at the ADCC in phagocytosis for the same antigen, you are now finding a very good correlation uh, with a value of 0 0.16. So again, uh, looking at one parameter, one parameter only will not cut to the chase. And what we 
propose, therefore, is that we will conduct a comprehensive analysis of a polyfunctional FC-mediated antibody responses induced by RV144 and 702 using AJV1 isolates from breakthrough vaccine in a placebo recipient. We will integrate this data with those obtained by the plan AGVTN study. And the assay used for in, a, in this study will facilitate the integration with the data uh, generated by Rasmitoma and Oste, Oste Genetics uh, and Eric, as you heard, the uninate responses. The machine learning will help us to identify in specifically among the uninfected, those that were unprotected and protected as already reported for uh, HVTN 505, where people who were infected represented by this uh, triangle could be sorted out among all the other uh, participants in the study. So we think that the, the innovation is that novel approaches for analysis of the breadth of polyfunctional IFC mediated antibody responses and functionality of vaccine effector cells are going to be explored. And we have a new analytical approach designed to identify the presence of correlative infection in poorly efficacious vaccine clinical trials, not limited to 702. What is the impact? These cutting edge experimental analytical approaches will be applied to define new candidates correlates for data available from RV144, 505, and new immunogenicity data collected for 702 and the other ongoing studies. We also want to um, point out that the analysis of polyfunctional FC-mediated antibody responses will also help to identify additional function required by the neutralizing antibodies responses, as suggested by uh, Drs. Wong and Hoi in a recent paper. And overall, this work will provide important insight into vaccine-mediated correlates uh, from infection and vaccine design as well. So we can now stop thanking enough uh, all the participants to the HVTN 702, the CAB community and uh, the clinical site and uh, the leadership for this trial, the funders and the collaborators in the study that we are proposing. Thank you, um, Guido, that was excellent. And we do have a question um, from Galit. Uh, asking the question was, uh, were RV144 antibodies more cross-reactive? And was there less diversity uh, in RV144? Is that why you think uh, 702 doesn't show any protection? And, and Galit, I believe you mean uh, diversity um, in the, uh, the infecting uh, strains of, uh, of HIV. So could you do a mini case control analysis in regions uh, where there are more similar viruses um, to, uh, to the vaccines, for example, to, in, in my GC protection. So this is, a, a, a Kelly, a, if, if I understand it you are, uh, correctly, is uh, uh, how was the breadth uh, in uh, RB144 compared uh, to 100? It, it's uh, clear that the breadth in 100, if you look at the vaccine-matched reagents, was higher than in RB144 but also the diversity between AE and the C are completely different. In, in 144, there was not enough coverage of the C, whereas because of the insertion of 1086 in their culminant proteins, that specific subtype C protein is actually more of an AE protein, in particular in the V2 region. So you have a completely different uh, uh, ball game over there. When you are going, as I was showing in some of the circulating, most recently circulating envelopes, then you start falling apart uh, in both. And you're absolutely right. We, that's one of the reasons to go and don't just base your observation on the vaccine matched um, antigens. Is not going to go there. I mean, even Dennis Burton in, the, in the, his uh, uh, recent non-human primate study where he used the BG505 uh, as an uh, immunogen and the SHIV CH505 as a challenge, the protection was not related to responses to BG505. 
it was related to the shiv ch505 so right there even in when you are talking about broadly neutralizing responses there could be dichotomy that uh, have not been uh, identified yet and, and, and um, Guido, sorry, do we know what the diversity is at all the different sites? Because we're all over Africa here. And so I guess what I wonder, right, is, you know, we're dealing with so much more diversity here. And, you know, would there be pockets where 1086 is more of a consensus where we can kind of inform how we would do a deeper? Yeah, network? so we are proposing that we are going to uh, collaborate with Jim and, uh, and Betty just to analyze the envelope exactly at that level. We've already developed something to downsize and identify the envelopes that we want to study, but we need to be careful because the more we downsize, the more we may lose a signal on specific structures of the envelope that are you know, it's important. really interesting, but I think you know this, right, Guido, is that we see, you know, the breadth of binding is also a correlate in the monkeys where there is not diversity. And so um, I guess the question to you, at least with the ADD26 products, the question to you is, um, what is the plan to add these studies also to 705? Because this question yeah. of functional breadth seems like yeah. it will not only be relevant to 702, the, but also to 705. And so what is the plan for that? If you can answer it like in five uh, questions, five, five words. In five words, yes, 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 yes. <laughs>